Saturn, Jupiter, and the Sun have their own gravitational weight? Gravitational weight. In chemistry and physics, we call it the atomic weight or the atomic molecules, which, which accumulates and becomes the actual critical mass. That's the other term that's used in physics, critical mass. Critical mass. And each planet has a mass equation of that critical mass, pushing weight on the fabric of space-time, times the orbital path, times 20. These are mathematical equations, right? Something happened, well, no. It, uh, there's always activity going on in space. <clears throat> Understand that the planets collide with each other. They collide, they break, they merge, they pull back, they come forward, they go back. Okay, that's diagram A. Diagram B. We have the sun. The planet Saturn, because of the collisions that was going on, because there's always some kind of collision or some kind of stretch of the fabric of space-time. And it usually happens, and when that happens, that creates another change, another epoch, another age begins. As above, so below. In the time of the Egyptian epoch, at the time of the Egyptian epoch, which goes back, hmm, I would say, uh, seven to ten million years. Not what scientists and anthropologists and archaeologists are telling you. Five thousand, ten thousand, or even twenty-five thousand years. No, it's, it's further back in time. The sun and the planets were not in the same orbital positions that they are today. You don't think that these planets at some point collided with the sun? Well, that's what happened with Saturn. Saturn at one point collided with the sun. And got a chunk of its fire. And it burned that, that okay, so you can understand. The this is the orbital of Saturn was probably closer to the sun than Mercury. Mercury, remember, is the one planet that's closest to the sun's orbital path, with Pluto being the last. But that doesn't mean that it was like that all the time. That doesn't mean that it was like that all the time. Because nothing is stagnant, nothing is static in space. Moves. There's, I have to mention two theories because I cannot explain it in the sense of fact, even though we know it is. But we have to put it that way in order to be, in order to be politically correct, in order to protect ourselves. But you know me, I don't care. I put it right out there. If they want to challenge me, go ahead. I love it. I love it. because I know that they can prove it. But the mathematics supports it. The mathematics supports it. It's quite plausible that this is what really happened. So now, we have a burning central sun, right? And we have a planet, Saturn, that's halfway burning and being luminous. It's halfway burning 
And the other part is not burning. It's either been charred or dry or it didn't burn completely. Or it happened at the first period of the Egyptian epoch. By the second period, it was cooling down and, and the only part of the planet was being scorched, fiery. The other part was already scorched. And this is the symbol of the Egyptian article. This is what's being seen. Is that this part of the planet is scorched and the other part is still on fire. And people misinterpret it as a star. Bingo. Mm -hmm. 